Oi! It's time for a long-awaited video, something that's been requested quite a few times now, my first look at the new damage model for DCS. In this video we are going to be conducting some ground tests, first looking at the old damage model and then comparing immediately after to the new damage model. Now a few caveats before we get on with this. Firstly, these damage tests have no impact on aircraft handling. These tests are all conducted on the ground in order to be precise. That means we can't test the effect on how the aircraft handle in the air when damaged. Second caveat, none of the aircraft are pulling additional G in these tests. So we cannot know what effect additional G load would also have on these aircraft after they've been damaged. The third caveat is this is just a small number of tests given the time available and how long it takes to render all this stuff down into a YouTube video. So any one of these tests could actually represent an anomaly. The only way to be sure about these results would be to conduct these tests over and over and over and over again to get a feel for the average results. Next, it is not possible for me to have hit exactly the same parts every time with every test. So there is going to be some variation, but the reason we test on the ground under these non-moving conditions is it allows us the best chance of trying to get our rounds to hit the same parts of the aircraft and to also know exactly how many rounds we are firing and how many rounds are hitting, something that is almost impossible to do if you try to do tests up in the air. Finally, the weapons we are firing are not World War II air-to-air -air weapons. They are, in fact, modern weapons from ground vehicles in DCS using combined arms. It is likely that these weapons are actually more effective than the World War II weapons, given the 25 to 50 years or so of weapons technology development in the interim. However, I think we can assume that the 12.7 millimeter is let's say a proxy or is similar to the 50 cal and the 25 millimeter HE rounds that we'll be firing are perhaps similar to the 30 millimeter that the Germans were using. Take that with a huge caveat, these are not precise one-to-one -one tests. The idea is to get a flavor for how the change in the DM has affected things from a couple of months ago to now and then to look at whether or not different caliber of weapons have reasonable damage responses and then we're also going to look at range right at the end of the video. Each of the individual tests are set up the same way. One of the modern ground vehicles is used either with the 12.7 millimeter gun or the 25 millimeter high explosive cannon. The vehicles are parked around 50 meters from the target aircraft. The aircraft is parked on the ground with the engine running with a human player sitting inside the aircraft observing the damage from inside. We will be observing the damage from the outside only and looking at the exterior damage and then getting feedback from the pilot sitting in the aircraft. The tests are conducted firing one at the engine two at the wingtips, and then three at the rudder areas of the aircraft. The aircraft that were chosen for the initial tests is the Spitfire 9, the P-51D, the P-47, and the 109K-4. I have then looked at the Anton briefly at the very end. In the interests of time, I decided to just look at those four aircraft because I thought they were representative of the nations involved and the different engine and wing configurations that were available. So this is testing 25mm HE rounds from a modern vehicle against the engine cowling of a Spitfire with its engine running. So I'm going to fire about midway down the exhaust stack. So there we go, after two rounds we've got a bit of a fire and some black smoke coming out of that engine. The engine is still running at this point and then the aircraft kind of collapses into a heap and destroys itself.
Now the big heavy gun, this is the 25mm HE gun onto the Spitfire engine cowling, so let's go. First round, oh, like massive damage visual. Yeah, edge is gone. Big cloud. Edge, edge, is, edge is really suffering. Right, rough running engine, big cloud of steam coming out the top. Now we've got the oil and I can see the prop is, is spinning strangely. This this engine is going to stop eventually. Yeah, there's um, no power there. There's no power? Okay, it's just going to run down to a stop. I'm tempted just yeah. to leave it. I have full, full throttle, we're doing less than four inches on the manifold pressure. Okay, so you've lost all manifold pressure effectively, and you're going to be flying pretty slowly if you did manage to get everyone. I'll try one more round, just to the cowling on the left again. And there we go, engine's out. Cloud of uh, black smoke pouring out the top. We'll probably have a fire in there in a second, so that's... Same again then with a P-51 Mustang aiming for about the same place on the engine. Light damage after the first. Another round. Three rounds. Four. Five. A bit higher up. Now we've got the engine fire here. You can see, and that aircraft is probably going to now shake itself to bits just like the Spitfire did collapse into the ground. P-51 25mm HE with the new damage model, let's go. First round, oh. game over. Straight to the to the main section of the engine block I guess and that thing is now on fire. So thank you very much. Moving on to the P-47. Here's a P-47 engine idling and we'll aim for the engine again. One round there. Got a fire and some black smoke pouring out just behind the engine. The fire's gone out and the engine appears to be running still. Two rounds. Three rounds. Four rounds. Piece of cowling dropping off the bottom. Engine still running. Five rounds. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. 19, 20, 21, <laughs> 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, yeah, there's a bit of smoke. About 33 rounds of 25mm uh, high explosive before that P-47 engine came to a stop. 25mm HE new damage model to the P-47 engine. Let's see how long she lasts this time. I've got oil spilling out yeah, out the front. Vibrating. Engine's vibrating. Okay, so it's probably not going to last terribly long. I'll give it a, a few seconds just to see if it looks like it's going to die of its own accord. Put how many power on. Yeah, tell me how many inches you can get. Right, we're in full throttle, and I'm only getting 30. 30 inches, okay, so that's about half the available manifold pressure normally. Okay, throttle back down. I'll try one more round. So it's about half power currently. Maybe a bit more. Oil spilling out, it's going to seize up eventually. Second round. Aircraft has actually sunk down. It looks like a shock blast or some shrapnel has hit the left tyre and has burst the left tyre because the aircraft just sat down a bit. I'm going to bring the the aim point forward towards the cylinder block a bit more. Okay, so this is three 25mm HE rounds have been fired at this aircraft from very, very short range directly into the engine. It does seem to be just a little bit too hardy. Yeah, Another I'm round. Full, I'm on full throttle as well and nothing's changing. Yeah, okay. Oh, right, that's okay. the engine. Power. Yeah. yeah, okay. It's, got, it's starting to splutter now. Yeah, I've got no engine sound coming from you. I guess it's just going to run down now. 
So this is significantly more hardy than the, the Spitfire and the P-51. It is going to stop eventually, but I'm surprised it's still running at all. We've seen that before, the base... The RPM dropping. RPM dropping? Okay. We're at 1,000. Oh, no. More yeah, cowling coming away. There it we goes. go. Okay. So that took quite a lot of HE 25mm rounds to bring that aircraft to a halt quickly. It's possible, it's highly likely that the engine would have brought itself to a halt anyway within short order because the oil was leaking everywhere and the RPM has dropped. So it would not have been combat capable after that second round, which is pretty obvious, but complete failure did take some time more. Take a look at the 109. Got a BF-109 down here. Start firing at the engine. One round. Some light damage visible. I can just see the decals there, but nothing catastrophic. A few bits of engine cowling coming off with the second round. More engine cowling. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, lots of bits of cowling off. 10, 12, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, whoops, that missed. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 40. One, and actually the wing came off before we got anywhere near actually destroying that engine. 25mm HE onto the 109 with the new damage model at the engine. First round, and there we go. Very similar to the P-51, in fact almost the same as the P-51, and similar to the Spitfire. A round of this caliber placed right onto the engine has stopped it instantly, and we now have an oil fire. Now we're going to aim for the wing. I'm going to aim just underneath the wing tip due to the angle I've got here and slightly behind. See if we can damage aileron or what parts of the wing seem to take damage. So here we go, aiming at the Spitfire. You can see the round actually landed halfway down the, the wing. It's landed a bit low, so I'll bring this up. But there's quite a lot of surface damage there on the wing. And then we've removed the left aileron and we've got now something leaking out of the radiator. Further round has now caused what looks like a fire, or at least black smoke coming out of the wing. Much more damaged decal as well. And now we've managed to sever the outer section of the wing. There was a short fire there, and now we've got some smoke coming out. So that wing has pretty much had it at this point. And there we go, now a new fire is developing closer to the engine as well. Single round. Pretty extensive damage visually, the whole end section of the wing is pretty heavily damaged. Still got guns? Cannon? No cannon. No cannon. Cannon's out. Okay, we've disabled the cannon. Firing another round. Can you check aileron? Still got aileron. So that's two 25mm HE rounds. I've got oil coming out of the possibly forward of the radiator. Lots of oil. So we've managed to, and the prop looks like it's spinning down. Yep, we've taken out yeah, the engine. The, the, the aileron is not sitting level with the wing lock. Oh yeah. Okay, we've, we've damaged the aileron, yeah. yeah. And we've yeah. actually taken out the engine with either shrapnel or blast, or we've taken out something under the aeroplane that is uh, necessary for the engine. Or it's penetrated through the wing and has hit the, behind the cowling. So we'll try another round. We're now getting damaged decals right the way down the left wing. It looks really heavily damaged. Got pieces falling off now, the underside of the flap. Heavy damage to the aileron. I'm trying to see where the... Okay. This aeroplane has been non-flyable for quite some time. I'm surprised that aileron has still got control authority. And we've taken the aileron clean off now. 
So that aircraft was probably non-combat capable after the second round. I think the first round would have caused significant drag on the wing, but um, it didn't last more than a couple of rounds realistically. We're a bit closer into this P-51, so we can be a tad more accurate, hopefully, or we'll get a round away. Okay, that did appear to land on the trailing edge, but I'm not seeing any major damage. Yeah, the right aileron's come off. The right aileron came off. Okay, there's interesting news for you. The right aileron has actually come off that aircraft. We'll try again. Now we've... Both off. Okay. Oh, that's the... That's the flap. flap. Yep, flap on the left is off. And now we've managed to sever the wing, cut, start a fire, and that aircraft's pretty much not going to be flyable anymore. P-51 now with shots to the wing. That round landed quite low. I'll try and bring it up a bit. Okay, we've taken out the left tire. The aircraft has sunk down now. Have you got aileron authority? No. Looks like not. Will the guns fire? Uh, hold up. Doesn't look like it, no. Okay. Oops, that round missed. A few more rounds then to the wingtip. It looks like the um, the light went out. The position light on the left wingtip went out. So we can take out electrical circuitry. Engine has started revving strangely by the looks of it. And we've now taken out the right, possibly collapsed the right landing gear. try and get some more damage and now we've managed to sever the wing with I don't know how many rounds that was but it was a significant number and this aircraft has been combat inoperable probably since about the second second round as well there is still some engine power and now the prop's bent good let's have a look at the p47 okay aiming at a similar location we'll try and get the control surfaces here First round, and we've lost lots of wing control surfaces and got fires, so that was pretty devastating. And now we're just chopping bits of wing off as we walk forward towards the cockpit. And I won't bother doing any more damage. That aircraft may make it home, who knows, but it's certainly very damaged. Here's the P-47. We've got a good angle to the wing from here, slightly forward of the left wing. Okay, four or five rounds to the left trailing edge still got control surface authority there that looks like it might have stopped it no nope. okay now we've managed to remove it you notice that just completely disappeared then i'm not sure where the part went but it is now gone after about five or six of these heavy rounds and these aren't really doing at least visually, the kind of damage I would expect to see. Can you? F oh, the, we know the guns won't fire when the aircraft's on the ground. But as we saw with the 12.7, this P47 does seem to be just a little bit hardy. Now I know these aircraft were able to take quite a beating, but when you're talking about this many high explosive rounds going into that wing, especially when we saw the responsiveness of the other aircraft wings, which are not wholly different in construction. It's, uh, I know these engines were pretty tough given the radial construction, but wings relatively similar in comparison. And I would expect this to have shown something a lot more significant already. We're seeing the tires bursting, Heading All below, pilot pilots, yeah, pilots dead, and now we've got an engine fire. So that wing might be just a little bit more resilient than I was expecting. I've got the uh, suppress su su suppression, suppression effect. Uh, effect, yeah. But certainly once we hit the fuselage beneath the pilot, it's uh, all over. And now you can see the engine is uh, starting to run a bit rough as well. Okay, we'll go to the 109. This aircraft's a bit further away. It won't be so easy to hit, but we'll try. Okay, there we go. We've removed uh, left trailing edge, possibly the aileron. The flap looks intact. We've got no, no right aileron now. The, the aileron's still there on the right, but there's no operation on it. Okay, so the right aileron, or at least the cabling to the right aileron, has been severed as well, because that's not working. It looks like something at the back of the airplane's come away as well, potentially. Not quite sure. 
now we've severed the wing and we've got a fire so we've basically put this aircraft out of action a couple more rounds here just for good measure and then <laughs> pieces flying all over the place large chunks of airplane coming away looking at the 109 wing then with the 25 millimeter he on the new damage model decals showing there underneath probably on top as well no need to fire the guns there in the nose there we go, more damage decals. This is looking very similar to the Spitfire, in fact. And damage the flap there. The ailerons come away. One of the tyres has burst. Very similar to the Spitfire and the P-51. The P-51 wing came off eventually. Now we've got a hole straight through the engine cowling out to the other side. But you can see it appears that there's no engine in there. I've also, my sight has gone very dim, so I think we've got some electrical damage. So some electrical damage. There's a, a, a hole straight through the engine. You can see there's no engine inside this airplane visual at all. And on this side, there is no hole. So they've got the visual modelling completely wrong there. That needs to be looked at. <laughs> that just looks bizarre. All rounds at the, at the wing. And I don't think this thing's ever going to come off, but in terms of combat capability, that aircraft is uh, is out of any fight for all intents and purposes. We've got the radiator leaking something too now. So this has long been a non-combat capable airplane. It's just a matter of time now before eventually we hit the main spar enough times that probably that wing will come away, similar to what we saw with the P-51. But don't really have the time to sit here pounding it with these cannon rounds until it does so but certainly if you were fighting that airplane you would not be capable of doing much anymore this time we're changing the caliber of the weapon to a 12.7 millimeter so we're expecting significantly less damage than what we see with the 25 mil h e so i'm going to fire at the spitfire here on the engine two three a little bit of damage showing there. A bit more damage decals after four or five rounds. Yeah, that's five rounds now. So some big damage decals. Punching a piece of cowling off. Eight rounds. That's 10 rounds. Engine's still going. Everything's still the same in the cockpit. 15 rounds now fired at this engine. 20 rounds. Thirty rounds. And now I'm just gonna hammer away. Another bit of cowling came up and we finally got a bit of a fire developing. That was a lot of rounds. Nearly a hundred. And now we've got an engine fire and the aircraft sort of collapsing. So somewhere in the region of 80 to 100 rounds before we managed to destroy the Spit. This is the Spitfire then with the 12.7 millimeter under the new damage model. So let's fire off a couple of rounds right at the engine. And you can see after two rounds there's already oil coming out of it. I can see this black um, oil spraying after two rounds. Five rounds of 12.7mm. Engine's still running but there is that oil still. And now we've got I just shake it uh, engine is shaking apparently according to the guy flying or sitting in that airplane and there's a big puff of steam just came out the top which is now stopped and then the engine has stopped so that was 10 rounds of 12.7 millimeter right into the side of the engine so now we have the p51 similar again 12.7 millimeter to the engine cowling damage decals showing quite early as we saw with the spit
That's a good 30 rounds fired. Just blasting that engine block now and that exhaust stack. Now fired 97 rounds at that engine to no real effect whatsoever. That engine has now taken 100 rounds from very, very close range directly into it and it's basically done nothing. So you can see there's a vast difference between how the MG versus the high explosive rounds are modelled. Keep going now, just holding this MG trigger down until that engine gets destroyed. That's another 100 rounds fired. So this thing has now had 200 rounds fired at it, and it's pretty much impervious. At this point, this is just nonsense. And, um, you know, it's clear that these MG rounds are just completely useless against that engine. Here is the P-51 firing with the 12.7 millimeter into the engine. Okay, first round in, you can see we've got the steam that we saw in the spit coming, okay, the, firing the at... I've got vibration and a funny noise as well. Coming. Okay, so he's got a vibrating engine and some and some funny noises, so we must have damaged something important. It's five rounds. So still just that initial damage from that first round. That's close to, to the prop hub there. Cloud of sort of blackish smoke comes away from the aeroplane. That's now seven rounds. Right, I've got oil on the windscreen. Okay, 10 rounds and we've got oil flying out of the prop hub now as well at the fore, forward end of the uh, engine cowling. And there we go, 12 rounds of the 12.7. The oil is still flying out the top and I think the engine is possibly still running but the prop is stopped. Okay, so the engine is completely stopped. We've got oil being squirting out of the um, engine still. I guess the argument would be that that's under some sort of pressure inside, but that should eventually disappear. Okay, so 12 rounds for the Mustang. Moving on now. There's only 100 rounds left in the gun here. I'm going to try and fire them off at the engine of the P-47. And there you can see we've actually got some effect, quite strong effect, really early on after eight rounds only. We've got a fire and we've got flame. The flame's now out and the fire's gone out. Can you just rev the engine with the brakes on and just tell me if it revs up okay? okay hold the light. Yep, seems fine. Okay, thanks, revved it back down. So despite the effects, it doesn't appear to have had any impact to the engine's operability. And the engine remains spinning. That's uh, 40 rounds fired. So I'm removing bits of, of cowling, but the engine itself is unaffected and we've now fired the full 100 rounds that remained in this gun at that engine and similar to the Mustang it has basically done nothing and I guess we could keep on firing and firing and firing for quite some more before we actually knocked that engine out. So we would expect the P47 to take a bit more damage than the other frames but we'll test it out here with the 12.7. Three rounds. I'll try and get closer to the where the cylinders are, four, five rounds, eight, nine, ten. So is the engine shaking at all? Nope. So it's still running fine. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, there we go, 17 rounds. The prop is now um, changing RPM significantly. I can see it visually, the prop changing. It's probably going to spin down. Shaking? Okay. Right, so the engine has taken serious damage, which is going to probably make it 
non-combat effective it's going to make it slow and that was a good 18 to 20 rounds another 10 so I think this aircraft would still be flying although it's going to be low on I've power really, I've got it on full throttle but it's not going full power ah okay so you've lost all power because yeah you wouldn't be able to hold that on full throttle it would start moving forward okay so the engine's just slowly dying here it's on very low RPM very low engine power and looks like the prop is now starting to spin down so that aircraft has long been combat inoperable but would probably still be chugging along at very low airspeed We'll try and completely disable the engine now with another five rounds. And another five. Quite a hardy engine. Bit of cowling fell off. Okay, that's about 50 rounds this engine has taken now. It doesn't seem to want to die. Okay, so we've put about 65, 70 rounds ish, give or take, into that cowling now. The aircraft wouldn't be flying very well at all, but the engine is still operating to a degree. Um, and you can see the cowling has fallen off the bottom and is floating in mid air just in front of that aircraft. Last aircraft on the block then from the 12.7mm gun is the 109. Here we go. Short burst there. I'll fire a couple of more short bursts to see when we start getting serious damage. You seeing any damage decals on that airplane? Yeah, I'm seeing a bullet pattern on the left. Okay, so... Yeah. And there's some on the bottom right of the cowling as well. Right, so we've got some bullet pattern showing, but no effect on the engine. Can you just hold the brakes on and give it a bit of a rev up and down? That seems okay. Yep, back down. Okay, so no main defect there. I'm pounding away at that engine now. We've now fired 81 rounds at it. And that's 100 rounds. Very close to no effect really on that engine. No big pieces of cowling coming off on this one. And the engine seems to be operating quite nicely. Just a few damage decals showing on the exterior. So no need to do any more firing at this. We get the picture. It's similar to the 51 and kind of the P47. So there's the 109 down there. A bit of range to this. We'll try a couple of rounds. That's yeah, already, already the engine sounding uh, uh, rough running. Yeah, and I can see the oil squirting out of it here. So this is almost exactly the same as what we saw with the Spitfire and the P-51. There's the big puff of steam coming out the top. Oh yeah, we've we now put a bit of power on the engines really, really rough. Really running rough, cool. And three more rounds, so that's 10 rounds now and oil still spewing out the top and it's apparently low power and running rough we'll see if we can stop the engine oh rpm's going through the roof is it you throttling up yeah i'm throttling up okay still taking a lot of hits There it goes. Start to depower. Funny, you're losing power. Okay, that was after about 60 rounds. It's still running though. It's about yeah. sim kind of similar to the P47 now. Yeah, the power's fluctuated. It's dropped, but it's, it's fluctuated. Okay. Right, I've got a full throttle now on the brakes. Okay, now I've got some fire it looks like smoke from a fire coming vertically out of the yeah, top of the yeah, here we there we've go, got an engine go. fire okay so it's caught fire now 
still able to taxi, so it's got enough power to pull the aircraft across the ground. Okay. Uh, dropped in more. Another level of fire there. Okay, so that's actually nearly 90 rounds into the engine. What I'm going to do now is get Steve to respawn in the 109 and I'm going to drive a lot closer just in case it's the effect of the small difference in range is significantly uh, oh, changing. Oh, I'm blacking out. You're blacking out, yeah, it's the engine fire yeah. killing the pilot. Okay, can you respawn in the, another 109 and I'm going to bring this vehicle closer. So now the purpose of this test is to see whether the difference in range makes a significant difference to the effect of the rounds hitting the aircraft. So here we go, fresh aircraft, 100 rounds in the gun. Five rounds. And then Ooh, two more, totally and the stop. engine is stopped. So it may be that there is just a very, very significant difference in range, that hitting at very, very short range is massively effective. It also might mean that I was just hitting different parts the first time around. So you're not going to get exactly the same result when it looks like you might be hitting the same part of an aircraft every time. There seems to be quite a tolerance for different damage responses based on that initial test anyway. Now we're going to be firing 12.7 millimeter rounds at the Spitfire wing, the left wing. So let's open up. Aircraft did rock a little bit there and I can see some damage decals just visible underneath the wing. And we've managed to sever that wing after only 15 rounds. That wing of the Spitfire is completely severed. The guns are still firing on the right hand side but that wing just came clean off after only 15 12.7 millimeter rounds. Now we're going to fire the 12.7 millimeter at the wings with the new damage model. This is the Spitfire, so let's have a crack. I suppose we've got damage decals there showing. There you can see quite a lot of damage decals. Left fuselage, left wing, and the right wing. So there's some indication that the damage has moved through the entirety of the vehicle and there's actually it looks like some oil coming out yeah there is a very thin cloud of oil coming out behind the engine kind of below and in front of the pilot I think we'll fire a few more rounds then no major change still the left aileron is moving right there's actually left aileron and right aileron are actually damaged they're slightly up and down okay so they're slightly off uneven yeah look look my yes i can see that yeah yep. it again yeah that center so there is some damage to the ailerons okay so aileron damage has been registered Oh, a couple of rounds bounced off the ground there. Now I've got I've lost, steam. Uh, I've, lost, I've lost ailerons now. So ailerons are completely inoperable. Okay, so this aircraft is certainly no longer combat capable. That's after about 60 rounds. Uh, the damage seemed to show on the ailerons at about 50 rounds, but I wasn't hitting them specifically, so it could have been a single round that damaged the aileron. And I'll just go until I fired 100 rounds which is in about 10 rounds time. Okay, there we go. So let's have a look at the airplane. We see the sort of mild levels of, of bullet damage and we've got the oil leaking still, I can see. In fact, has the engine stopped of its own accord? And now the engine's yep. caught fire, it has. So after some time with these repeated MG rounds to the wing and probably penetrating through the wing and through the fuselage we have actually hit some parts which are necessary for engine operation possibly the the leaking oil over time just ran the engine dry when it seized up but there you go so we lost uh, control also, surface authority and engine eventually i would also say by the way the rounds were hitting the wings that someone would have come through the cockpit and killed the pilot
Yeah, there is a lot of um, there is a lot of damage on the fuselage below the pilot around the feet. I mean, okay, you could we could argue that there was a lucky miss there, but um, yeah, I think if we were aiming deliberately at the pilot, we would certainly kill him. Here's the P fifty one. I've got uh, eighty five rounds showing, so we'll start firing at the wing. And there we go. Once again, we've managed to take off the the wing similar to the Spitfire and that time we used just 18 or 19 rounds you'll see that the right guns are firing but the left guns are not as you would expect with that left wing being pretty hammered okay so here's the P-51 aiming again at the wing just sort of between the rondel and the wing tip okay very similar damage state to what we saw with the Spitfire in terms of visuals got a different angle here we're not shooting with the engine behind the wing so it's less likely we'll damage the necessary parts for engine operation although there still could be some liquid supply through the fuselage that could get hit we're more likely to kill the pilot here if the bullets penetrate through though okay, it's 20 rounds fired still it looks like we've got aileron authority Oh, there we go. We've actually managed to dislodge the left aileron. And the left guns are not firing. So the right guns are firing. The right aileron, does it move? Can you just use the right aileron? Yeah. The left aileron has been removed. Can you try the flaps? Ah, oh, the left flap is away too. See if the flaps will deploy. Okay, yeah, right flap is deploying and left flap has been shot off. So there we go. Looking good. Continuing to fire then. Okay, there's no need to test the guns um, at this point. Okay, the wings are not snapping off or anything. They're just taking a lot of damage. And I've now got some flicking, which indicates I've got some new leaking somewhere. Yeah, it looks like a very thin white cloud is coming from possibly the radiator. Or it could be like a fuel spraying out but there's definitely a very thin white kind of cloud flicking here and if the aircraft was flying through the air fast that would look like a very thin white trail behind it I think it's uh, just over 80 rounds fired now I'll go take it up to 100 like I did with the spit and one more round there we go so it doesn't look like we've killed the pilot none of those rounds have gone through and hit the pilot which is a little surprising but I think we would have had to have been aiming there on the leading edge to hit the pilot or around where the guns are on the left leading edge so we could have missed him theoretically but it looks pretty similar no damage to the right wing except for a few a few decals right on the end so the damage on the right hand side is significantly less than what we saw in the spit but fairly similar overall result save for the engine not being knocked out but we weren't hitting the engine through the wing anyway so no surprise We're showing 61 rounds remaining so we'll start firing at the left wing of the p47 there is a black smoke rising from it and pretty solid damage decals already now we've got a fire very strange looking fire developing for some reason i've also got a fire over there by the hangars i'm not sure how that's happened and it looks like the wing has come off at about halfway down so about 30 or 40 rounds and we saw the wing coming off and now i'm just going to fire at the engine just to see if we have a different response to what we had with the engine before and it doesn't appear we have so the engine's still quite resilient even after other parts of the aircraft have taken damage so this time I'm nice and close to the P-47. I've got the pilot directly behind, so we may be able to kill the pilot this time. Slightly different angle from the last two, so it's not the perfect test because we are just changing the angle a little bit, but we'll try. Got 100 rounds ready. So there we go, that's 20 rounds fired. Damage decals on the wing exterior. Aileron is still working. Guns, can you just check the guns quickly? Uh, if they'll fire on the ground, they probably won't. Uh, I've got don't worry about it. I'm that's okay. Them. Okay, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Alright, so we'll try some more rounds here. We'll see if we can get that. OK, 
Okay, does the aileron still work? Can you just give it a wiggle? Yep, looks like it might have slightly reduced movement, but it's hard to tell. That's uh, 50 rounds or so fired. Yeah, they're not sitting quite... The left one's not sitting quite level either, look. look. Yeah, left okay, so it's damaged in. like we saw with the Spitfire early on, yeah. Yep. So 75 rounds fired. Nothing is going through and getting near the pilot. So his legs and... I would be firing these rounds possibly landing just below the pilot's bum, though. Four rounds to go before we hit 100. That's 100 rounds fired, very close range. Similar damage decals to we saw on the Spit, in fact, a little bit more than we saw on the Mustang. We've still got a bit of aileron authority. Could you give them a full full deflection wiggle? Oh yeah, they look. They don't look very smooth at all. I think that's restricted movement on the ailerons. They're also not reset right either. Yeah, and they're not they're not steady. So, okay, some sort of moderate damage, but overall this aircraft is probably still fairly flyable, and will certainly get you home if at least you had to leave the combat environment. Let's try the 109. Firing at the left wing of the 109. got some fluid I think leaking out potentially underneath I've got, I can see damaged decals and there we go we've severed the 109's wing and the right wing is also on fire and the props bent as it's hit the ground so that was about 32 rounds before that so the wings will sever with quite a small number of rounds whereas the engines are very very strong on some types and not others. It's very, very difficult to get any kind of consistent read across types. And the way the parts are breaking off and, and being damaged doesn't really seem that sensible either. Here we are shooting at the 109, aiming for the wing, similar to the other tests. Ten rounds, how's the aileron looking? Okay, it still looks good. Okay, so that's twenty rounds fired. Just looking there. Damage decals now looking quite serious actually. Aileron check. Yeah. Good deflection on the ailerons. Guns are all in the nose, so they shouldn't have been affected. Okay, then yeah, we've got... Yeah, just starting to, uh, yeah, starting to stick now. Are they gone completely? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've actually managed to sever some part of, or at least block or damage or restrict one part of the controls to the ailerons, which have now stopped. So that was after 35 rounds of firing. I'm just going to put a bunch more rounds in kind of just rapidly and almost randomly here okay that's significant damage I think I've hit the radiator some of those shots down the bottom or I've hit some part of the engine but you can see now the damage decals still looking relatively similar we've got a white cloud sitting around the engine so I've hit the radiator somewhere and eventually that's going to come to a complete stop just throttling up to check engine power we've still got engine power And that's well over 100 rounds now. Wing is pretty seriously damaged, but we know that the ailerons have stopped working for some time, and now it looks like this radiator is eventually going to run dry, and then that engine will stop. So also not combat capable, I would suggest, after about 50 rounds or so to the wing. There's been a little bit of feedback that I've heard since the new DM came out that the Fokker 190 Anton, which is this one here, has been a little bit strangely resistant to damage. We didn't go through this aircraft and test it before the DM came out, so I don't have any pre-new DM footage to compare this to, but I thought we can possibly compare it to the other airframes. So I'm gonna fire a couple of these 25 millimeter HE rounds at the engine to begin with, and we'll just see if it responds similar to the Spit and the Mustang, or if it is more like the P47. So here we go. Okay, we've already lost the left 
Right, okay, the engine is really shaking now. Engine's really shaking, okay, so this is initially looking more like the fragility of the Spitfire and the P-51. We've got that blasted left tyre already and damaged decals around the engine. We've also lost the sight, so this is obviously... And yeah, we've got some electrical damage as well. Okay, electrical damage, gun sight's missing, excellent. Second round, and more blast damage then on the right hand side, taking out the right tyre and the engine is stopped. So two yeah. rounds was enough to destroy the engine, aiming for the rudder now. Single round has caused significant damage and low rudder authority. That round went straight through. And now we've blasted the tail off. Engine is now on fire. We've taken off the left aileron with a single 25mm round. Engine's blasting itself to bits. It's got damage on the cockpit. The physics are going mental. And it looks like we've caused significant trouble and the aircraft has exploded. So I think the suggestion, based on that one test, the suggestion that the stuff of the Fokker Wolf is somehow impervious to damage is not supported, certainly by this test. We'll have a look at the 12.7 millimeter now, just to see if there's any significant differences there. Now we'll take a look with the 12.7 millimeter firing then at the engine. Good 15 rounds there, and you can see we don't appear to have done terribly much damage. Is it running okay from the cockpit? No, shaking. Shaking, shaking. okay. So we've made the engine um, rough running and it's shaking, which makes it actually very difficult to pilot. So that was after 15 rounds. Throttling forward there, you can still see we've probably got good power. Now the second level of damage is appearing very difficult to inflict with these lower caliber rounds. And there's the engine. So that was, or was that you throttling back? No, that's the engine. Oh, that's the engine. Okay, so that was about 50, 55 rounds or so. Hard to tell whether that is uh, significantly um, different to the other ones at this point. I think that sits about between the Spitfire and the Mustang and the P-47, which took a lot more. So, uh, Just to note, there's no electrical damage this time either. No electrical damage from this. So the blast damage, these bullets are just going straight in and hitting specific pieces. Have a look at, look at the wing now. There we go. I've managed to shoot the aileron off and cause damage along the wing itself. Firing at the back of the aeroplane. And there we go, we've run out of ammunition. So, it does take damage. It seems a little bit hardier than the Spit and the P-51 maybe, but not nearly as hardy, it would appear, as the P-47, which does seem to take a surprisingly large amount of damage. And you can see we've only got weapons firing on one side now too. So the aircraft is heavily damaged after the 12.7 millimeter rounds as well. Now we're going to have a look at range, where the range significantly changes the impact of these bullets. This is 259 meters between the APC and the Fokker Wolf. It's a 0.14 of a nautical mile. This is right about or just beyond convergence range for most of the fighters, so just outside of convergence range. We're going to be firing at the engine cowling. Six rounds. Okay, 12 rounds fired, no effect. Still running. 20 rounds fired. Okay, starting to vibrate now. Okay, starting to vibrate after about 40 rounds. The damage decals don't look as serious as they did previously. Okay, I'll get it up to 70 rounds. Yep, losing power. 70 rounds fired, the aircraft is now losing power. So this appears to be significantly more than the number of rounds the aircraft yeah, that just got. took at close range. And there you can see the engine puttering out. So to me, there does seem to be a difference 
between how much damage you can inflict if you're getting close versus firing at range. So this is 290 meters, remember, which is about, or 250 meters, which is about normal convergence range. So in order to pack a really, really heavy punch, you need to get in close. And if you're firing at long ranges, four or 500 meters, you can expect to do, be doing significantly less damage, it seems, than if you get up nice and close.